Hi, Scorpio. I can't think of a better day to be talking with you than today because I am feeling everything. We'll see if I can hold it together in this reading with you guys. Um, I think actually March is going to be a really nice restorative time for you. I have good feelings for Scorpio energy in March. Um, it's not super flashy, but it's it melds with you, right? Pisces energy is really nice for Scorpio energy. It, it's very healing. It's very symbiotic. It's, you know, it, it just has a warmth to it. And the moons are, are pretty positive for you as well. We have a full moon in Virgo on, on March 1st, which is in your 11th house of, you know, your friendships and your community and the collective. Really great energy to kind of just look at your friendships, make sure you're feeling good with everything, check in with people that you love, that kind of thing. You may feel communicative, actually. We have a new moon in Pisces, your fifth house on the 17th. Time to check in with, you know, this is creative, heart-centered, romantic stuff, so you need to set some intentions for what you're creating and and the romance you want to create in your life, and the projects you want to create in your life. This is getting real. That moon could be very real for you, actually. I'm feeling right now like that moon could be one where you really feel like sitting down and writing it out, and I would highly recommend that. If you have that book that's eluding you, if you have that person that's still on your mind, if you have a project or something that needs to sit down and write it out in that new moon energy. And then we have the full moon in Libra. And that is in your 12th house, right? So you're being asked to look a little bit more at the more spiritual deep side of yourself once we hit the end of the month. It's interesting too, because as we go through the month, because of your water sign energy, the first three weeks of the month are going to be a little easier for you. We hit Aries season. Then we're getting into some more of the homework element, right? Because we have a Mercury retrograde happening um, on March 22nd in Aries, your sixth house of health right? Daily habits, service, all of this like very grounded practical stuff. So, you know, Mercury is about communication and all of this, right? And one thing you might be noticing is you are getting a little slow down with just taking care of your body, taking care of, you know, your physical being and also your spiritual being as well, all that energetic stuff. And here's the other big thing that's going on astrologically as I shuffle these cards today. Jupiter's going uh, retrograde on March 8th for four months. It's a very common retrograde. It's it's an outer planet. It's not going to be super personal. However, because it's in your sign of Scorpio, you're going to be... This is really good for you guys, actually. I think Jupiter and Scorpio has been a little shocking for my Scorps out there. It's been a little intense, you know, like having that spotlight just is just a lot. And having it in retrograde like that, the note that I had for that was it's going to give you a chance to take a breath with that and incorporate everything that came with that first four months of it being in your sign. And I think that's going to actually be a much easier transit for you having it retro like that. So that's going to be kind of nice. Once again, there's a soothingness here. There's a healing element to you needing, you need that healing time. I feel like there's been a lot pushing at you for a while and you needing that Piscean healing time, that slow down with Jupiter, it's going to be really good for you. And then on the practical side, once we hit Aries season and we're in your sixth house, getting the chance to just um, reset a little bit physically, right? It's, it's a weird month. The shift from Pisces to Aries I find is kind of jagged. It's intense. It's, it's that alpha omega shift that is it's pretty demanding energetically. That's just part of the reason I'm feeling everything right now. Plus, I mean, I'm a very fire focused person. Being in Pisces season for me is like swimming in water when I've never even seen an ocean before. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have, but man, um, I'm having to learn the water sign skills, right? I do have Scorpio influences, so that does help me. It does help me a lot. Um, however, however, March is heavy. I'm doing your reading about halfway through the pack and I I am a little intimidated by the homework we're all getting. So I'm really curious to see what the cards are saying, my loves. I know it's been hard. I know, I know it's been super confusing. And one of the things about this month and part of why I'm like, woo, this is interesting, is there's a lot of stop and go. There's a lot of like, yes, let's go. Oh, let's pull back and make sure we like what we see. Oh, yes, let's go. I see exactly what I want. Oh, but not yet. 
and it's for everybody and it's causing there to be a little bit of disruption in the energy so we're all going to need to be patient with ourselves first and foremost it's a month that's teaching deep self-love for everybody very stringently it's like the strictest teacher and it's also teaching us patience with others so let's look at what we have here for you guys Oh, wow. We have some really beautiful energies for you. We do. We really do. Um, but that require you to, yes, check in a little bit. Okay. So the beginning of the month, you guys are actually going to be feeling very strong. Page of Wands, Eight of Wands, Queen of Swords. Fantastic. Um, this is kind of, for me, it's that clarity of vision with the full moon and the new moon there at the beginning of the month. The first half of the month. Those moons are really good for you. They address your your social life and what's going on there. And then also planting your seeds for what you want to build next. Fantastic energy, right? And so I think there's going to be clarity of vision here. You may be getting, um, you know, insights from those around you. I don't know. You have a lot of air and fire here. Very interesting. Um, which, honestly, this is going to be asking you to go at full speed at the beginning of the month. And you may feel like that urgency of just wanting to do everything right out of the gate. You may be really busy the first week of the month. Um, you may be getting insights from people that you've been waiting for insights from, which is great because we are not in Mercury, Mercury retrograde yet. We're probably in shadow, but you know what? Whatever. Don't let Mercury retrograde get you down. Um, <clears throat> It's good for us, it's good for all of us to slow and incorporate. Incorporation is huge. But here's the thing that I'm getting with this. You're going to be feeling all fired up. The energy is very good for you right now. You're going to be wanting to do all this stuff. You might be setting some healthy boundaries with people. You might be getting some new opportunities. And you're going to be wanting to burn the candle at both ends. But Scorpios, you know you can't. You know you can't. You know that if you stuck in this energy for like weeks on end like imagine that really seriously think like think about being in this modality for weeks on end it's kind of hellish right like for you there's so there's excitement there's something really positive going on here i think that first week of the month could be really magical for you like very a glow is the word i would use a glow um, I would watch out too for Scorps, but that's Queen of Swords energy. You guys might be really sassy. <laughs> you could be stinging somebody. I don't know. Because you're going to be feeling good. You're going to be feeling that Piscean fifth house brightness. It's really great. Very empowered energy right there. And so you're going to just be like ready to go. But then you are being called to ground down. And this is where we get into the middle of the month. And like I said, that shift from Pisces to Aries is intense. It's intense. It just, it just is. It's one of the bigger moments in the year. And it is jarring. It is jarring. And for certain signs, it just plays out in different ways. For you, it is going to be like you're just going along. You're feeling sassy. You're feeling like you're... And then... You're being asked to get grounded. Ace of Swords, the Hermit, the Hierophant. Okay, this is beautiful. And I really like this. I mean, honestly, the energy for you is fantastic this month, Scorpio. I'm dramatizing it a little bit here, I feel like, because it's there is this kind of sudden shift. We're in this high-speed energy, and then we get grounded. So that's interesting to me. But here's the thing. You're getting an insight here, right? You're getting a clarity about something. This is a new beginning. This is great for anybody out there who likes to write or share ideas or communicate. Very good communication energy, right? This is an opportunity to get the pen on paper, so to speak, and get the ideas flowing. But this isn't the flashy external stuff that we were just seeing at the beginning of the month where you're out and about and you're extroverted and you're talking to maybe some air and, uh, air and fire signs and getting some information and feeling sassy. This is a little bit more isolated. The way that this Ace of Swords is coming out, this is much more about the work you're doing in the world with you, who you are. Now, you know, the Hermit is the Virgo energy, Hierophant is Taurus energy, and it, they're both really grounded spiritual seeking energies. This is the grounded aspect of spiritual seeking, right? Which is great for Scorpio. 
Um, because Scorpios, you guys are swimming around, able to just traverse many waters. <laughs> you can float around for eons, um, going from here to there to everywhere and feeling it all out. It's beautiful. It's fantastic, right? And that's when the grounding is such a blessing for you because it brings you somewhere nice. It, it gives you a, a resting place, takes you out of that expansiveness a little bit and gives you some tools. I feel like a lot of you know that you have work you want to do. You, and by the way, for those of you interested in an earth sign, connected to an earth sign, interested in somebody with a lot of earthy qualities, seems like you're getting some kind of clarity there. Some kind of answer. It's good energy. So you may be getting that green light for a new beginning or a date or working together if you're working with somebody who you really wanted to work with. It's good, good energy. For those of you, though, I'm reading a lot of this as being your life's work. Who you are, what you're wanting to bring to others. And before you can do that bringing to others, because you have so much healing to give, you have so much heart to give, you have so much soul to give, before you can do that healing, you got to go in here, right? Now, you are being asked to be impeccable with yourself, with your soul. This is the kind of energy, uh, this is where I'm going to lose it. This is where I'm going to lose it. Oh, man. This is the kind of energy where you have to sit with yourself. And not in that way of like working. You know how like you're like, all right, I want to work through the pain I've felt in life. I want to work through the demons I have, the life I've lived. It's like when you are alone with yourself in the joy of it. Do you ever find that's hard? To just be in the subtle joy of it without those hauntings coming up. You guys need this really bad right now. Like, you need this safety. You know, higher fan is Taurus, it's your opposite sign, and we need our opposites. We need to be in the opposite way. Um, and not the opposite, there's not really opposites, two sides of the same coin, right? A different lens through which to see the same world, you know, we're part of the same pole. You have to slow down a little bit. You're pushing hard. You want to be everything. You want to be perfect in what you're doing. You want to be somebody's everything. You want to do all the work. You want to show up for everything and you worry that if you don't, it's all going to fall apart and you're going to be left alone with the wounds again. But this energy is a grace to let you know it's okay. It's okay to share this mission, to share this love, to share your deepest held desires. The top three cards, Wheel of Fortune, the Lovers, and the Eight of Swords. For some of you, man, I'm feeling the earth sign energy, right? It's strong. I think some of you really have somebody in your life you want to take it to the next level with you want to open up that next chapter with. A little nerves about that though, right? Eight of Swords. A little nerves about this right here, right? It's not surprising this is showing up. This often shows up. Mercury retrograde as well can cause some of this, something to keep in mind. You know, everything can be going great, which it is. All the first six cards, such good energy, such positive energy. I know I cried, but it's really good energy. You're moving forward, you're getting things done, and then we have this, opportunities coming into place, things clicking into gear for you and a relationship. 
you know, like there's something really going on here with this relationship that could be really good for you. Like really good for you. Um, perfect for you, really. Gemini card. There's that Scorpio Gemini thing. I was, I've been talking about Scorpios and Geminis. You guys got the craziest connection. I'm so fascinated by it. Here it is again, <laughs> for those of you with a Gemini. Um, you know what I'm thinking about too, with all that grounding, I was just talking about that piece, that place of grace where you don't feel you have to push all the time. You are coming back out of that into this brand new open territory, right? The end of the month, we, there's a, there's movement again. We slow down, we ground in, and then we move again. We're moving forward. You are going to be moving into new territory right here. You are, you are on the path to this new thing. It's happening. It's actually happening. It's not just the idea of it. This is it actually happening, making choices, something opening up, a very specific opportunity coming your way, something really changing. That's coming. Like it is. And I even more so because the Eight of Swords is the last card. In fact, I'm going to pull one more card for you guys really quickly here because Eight of Swords you know, it is. It's feeling like you can't quite see what's going on. And that's, that card comes up. It's a kind of protective thing. You, so you don't lash out. You don't push too hard when it's time to maybe just trust a little bit more, right? We get our senses taken away in order to learn to trust more, in order to listen in a little bit more intently. And like I said, also, you may feel maybe a little isolated. Maybe you don't understand your partner, or maybe you don't understand the thing, the judgment card. Perfect. There you guys are. Hey. You're going to see. It's not going to last long. Look at that. If you're getting all these green lights, which basically this entire month is green lights again, and you have a day or two where you need to sit in the quiet, do it. Take your time. Breathe. Don't react to the bondage, the mental bondage. It's okay. It'll pass. You may have some miscommunications. You may not understand your partner or a person you're interested in or a situation that you're in at work right out of the gate. You may be like, what the hell is that? But it's all good. It's all good. It'll get cleared. It'll get clarified. It will. It's coming. You guys are, you guys are shifting energetically, you know? Yeah, you are. You're coming into some new territory. I think this month may really turn your world completely into a new pasture. Like, you're getting a lot of your action in March, actually. The the change is happening in March. A lot of people, March is a setup month. It's a month to pay attention. And then April's a movement month. For you, March. Especially if you give yourself the grace to have the beauty. I know. I know, you guys. I know how hard that is for you. I love you. I appreciate you guys. I do. So check out my website and my email. I'm traveling in March a bit, so I may be doing a few recorded readings, but April's going to be your best bet, so get in touch with me. I'd love to do a personal reading with you on Skype or a video recording or even on the phone. Also, check out this amazing crown by the glorious Pink Loon. This is a one-of-a-kind crown she made specifically for me to wear in these monthly readings, and we are selling it at her store. So one person gets this crown. It is fantastic. The energy around it is amazing. I love it. So I'm going to leave the link for this crown plus her store because there's more goodies that all one-of-a-kind, all amazing, all smudged, charged, everything. Um, check her out. I'm going to leave all the information you'll ever need to know about this crown and my stuff and my site. And also follow me on Instagram if you want to find out what this emotional journey that I'm always on is all about. I would love to see you guys over there um, to join the conversations we have on Instagram because they're really fun. Um, I'm sending you all the best. I will see you in April and um, I love you guys. Mwah.